Hello, hello. Welcome to Angela's Busy Bees Garden and Homestead. Guys, I'm still looking for a space in my raised beds where I can grow additional food. And last week, I planted some potatoes, and there were a couple that were really large. And I decided to go on and cut them in half and allow them time to scab over. And I was looking in my bed of collards here, and there's ample space where I can grow some potatoes in this bed. So what I've done is I've gone on and I've dug holes. I've placed some bone meal and some all-purpose fertilizer. And now I am simply going to take my potatoes and place them in the hole. And I'll be covering those over. I'm making sure that the eyes on the potatoes are facing upward. Like so. And I've got two more. I'm trying to cut back guys on having to purchase so much soil, I'm reusing soil, and uh, just trying to take advantage of available space in my garden. And on last week, I also shared with you how I am growing in the cinder blocks as well and I know um, things can grow well in the cinder blocks um, such as your brassicas because I have been growing kale last spring until now in the cells of these cinder blocks and one thing um, that you need to remember is that I used cardboard when I first created these raised beds, so the roots are really able to go down into the ground. So even though the square seems small, the roots are still able to penetrate, and therefore I'm able to still grow in the cells of the cinder blocks, um, those types of vegetables um, that may have a deep root. root. And in this bed, I also see where I have some extra space, um, but I'm also allowing space also for flowers and different things like that. Um, over in this bed, I will be dropping some seeds for sugar snap peas that can grow up this trellis. And then over here, I'm noticing some extra space in which I can add a few more things that are companion plants with collards and kale. Now I'm noticing here, this looks like it wants to die off or break off. Let's see. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe too much water. But this pot, this part seems to still be healthy. So I'm going to see how long uh, it'll be able to stay in here. But it's very important also that you remove any dead leaves. Or any rotting material uh, among your leafy greens. I see some more over there I'll have to get later. But the mustard greens that I planted in the cells of the cinder blocks are doing well. And we've had temperatures at night as low as 28 degrees. But as you can see, they are still standing and are still doing well. Mustard greens um, love the cool temperatures anyway. As soon as it gets warm, they're going to start dying back. Let me just grab some of these dead leaves here. This is my bed of Brussels sprouts and I've planted potatoes among the Brussels sprouts. And also guys, there's some Sedum Autumn Joy 
and time also around this bed. And I understand that time uh, helps potatoes uh, in developing great taste. Um, it also helps with pests and things like that. So they are companion plants for potatoes and also your brassicas. And guys, I am still transplanting from these mustard greens and I won't be able to use all, but where I do have space, I'm going to continue to see if I can grow more mustard greens. And even if my freezer's full or my pantry's full, um, they can be shared with other people. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is go over to the other garden area and plant some collards and some cabbage. Okay, guys, this is the bed that I'm going to grow my collards. I'm going to add some mustard greens to this bed. And towards the back, I'm going to plant some okra. And the reason why I'm planting the okra in the back beds uh, is so that it doesn't shade out anything um, that requires full sun. Um, it's okay to plant it in this bed, even though the collards are here because you know brassicas prefer cooler temperatures anyway um, but what I've gone on and done guys is I've added some compost uh, composted organic humus to this raised bed and I've added some of my coffee grounds um, that I picked up from Starbucks and I'm keeping it in this five gallon container um, but as um, you know uh, coffee grounds provides nitrogen to the soil and your leafy greens of course love nitrogen and it helps them to grow nice beautiful green leaves so what I'm going to do is these are my mustard green transplants and I'm thinking the first two rows are probably going to be collard greens and so I think I'm going to plant some mustard greens in the middle right here and then also back towards the end and I'm simply just going to make a hole and put these in just like that and I'm going to plant them about six inches apart and that should be sufficient for them to grow nice big beautiful leaves And uh, this, uh, the coffee grounds are smelling like a fresh pot of coffee that's just been brewed. I'm going to continue planting these mustard greens and I'll come back and let you see what they're looking like. Okay, I have my mustard greens in the garden bed. And now I'm going to add my collard greens that I grew from seed. And as I stated, they're going to be in the front and in the middle and along the back will be okra. And when these uh, mustard greens die back, I'll remove them and perhaps add either some peas or some green beans to this raised bed. So let me start now. 
with putting in my collards. I just absolutely love those little orange cups. But it's great for planting. And I like to place them in these trays of 18 that I pick up from Lowe's uh, in the recycled section of the store. Let's see, put another one here. And I'm going to go on down and finish out the collard greens and come back and let you see what the raised bed is looking like. Okay, I've planted the collards along with the mustard greens. And I've left enough space in the back for my okra and also some marigolds. And now I'm on to the next bed, which is going to be my cabbage bed right here. And as you can see, guys, before I can plant or amend the soil, I'll need to remove all of the weeds from out of this raised bed. And I really believe going forward what I'm going to be doing in the fall slash winter if I'm not using these beds for fall planting, I'm just going to cover them over with cardboard to see if that will help to eliminate some of this weeding. So I'm going to weed this out and come back uh, when I'm ready to plant the cabbage. Okay, so my cabbage has been planted in the raised bed. There's a total of 18 of them. And while I was at it, guys, I decided to go on and plant my broccoli as well. And I have planted broccoli as well. And among the broccoli guys uh, was my sedum autumn joy. I've got some garlic in here, um, David Austin Rose, and a phlox over towards the back over here that has started coming back as well, as you can see here. So the phlox, the broccoli, uh, garlic, David Austin Rose, I'll probably also be adding some marigolds or some nasturtiums to this bed as well as the cabbage bed and as you can see I've got lots of room in which I can tuck in some extra plants and then this is the bed of mustard greens with collards and as I've stated I'm going to put some marigolds and okra towards the back and the last thing that I'm going to do guys is clean out this asparagus bed and add some more soil um, because I know that asparagus is one of the first crops to start coming back in spring. Um, so I want to make sure that this is cleaned out. I'll add some more soil to it. And um, guys, this is the rest of the garden. I have a total of 26 raised beds. And so I don't try to do everything all in one day. Uh, I tend to space it out. And today has been a beautiful day and a great day to be in the garden. Uh, it rained all day yesterday. And so um, everything is very hydrated. And I've checked the weather for the next 
several days, in fact, the next 10 days, and it looks like we're going to be in the 60s, upper 50s, and then at night look like in the 50s and 40s. So I felt this is a good time for me to get some things into the garden. Uh, I've got lots of transplants still inside, like tomatoes, peppers, squash, zucchini. I have also have... Um, marigolds, nasturtiums, okra, sage, uh, basil, and other things growing in the house. So it's just good to get these out. And I've also got some uh, being acclimated to outside temperatures on my balcony. Uh, but just want to let you know uh, what I'm doing today and to share with you that I am making progress in terms of spring planting for 2024 and as glades garden girl always says grow more in 2024 okay guys thank you so much and uh i will clean this bed out and perhaps just come back and just let you see what everything is looking like thus far okay guys this is it this is the cabbage bed this is the broccoli bed. This is my mustard greens, collards, and soon to be okra and marigolds. I've got cabbage and collards here. And in the center blocks, I've got spinach so far, broccoli and collards, and potatoes in the center blocks. I have spinach over here I have onions bok choy and spinach over here I have mustard greens cabbage mustard greens in the back over here I have broccoli cabbage in the cinder blocks I have mustard greens in the bed, there's also some oregano and thyme and potatoes that have not come up as of yet. And over here, I have everything that was planted in fall that is still thriving. Um, I've added some potatoes to the raised beds where there was space. I've added mustard greens in the cells of the cinder blocks. And I've added potatoes to the bed with the Brussels sprouts, thyme, and mustard greens around the cinder blocks. And as I've stated, these are all planted from fall. Here I have collard greens and kale, cabbage and kale, broccoli and kale.